Hello and welcome to project number three from the color theory book, how to see color and paint it. I'm Tracy L. Turner and I will be walking us through these exercises in the book. For this particular project, I thought that I would just do a commentary on the colors that I mixed for this particular exercise. I probably won't do it for each one from here on out but I thought it would be a good idea to at least have one video where I show you just a basic process of color mixing and just kind of talk through that so all right let's just go ahead and get into this okay so let's go over the color palette we have titanium white cadmium yellow light cadmium orange Next, we have Cadmium Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue. Next, we have Thalo Blue, and finally, Thalo Green. So here's our setup. We have the primary colors for the floor, wall, and the walls, and in the center, or um, Kind of at the edge here it's very specific way they that you have to set it up it took me a long time to get it semi correct but it's a, a green cube in our still life box and first we're going to mix the colors for the blue floor so i'm starting out with titanium white because um since the light is kind of hitting that floor a little bit we want to start out with uh, a, a lighter value or a shade of the color and uh, when you're mixing color a good tip to keep in mind is that it's better to start with your lighter colors and then mix in your darker colors because it's way easier to make a color darker than it is to make it lighter if you need to correct yourself so um, the more and more you kind of practice and get used to how the paint colors interact you, you will get more of a sixth sense for this but um but that but that is a, a tip to keep in mind as a painter so um here i am mixing in ultramarine blue and a little bit of the phthalo blue sorry you can't see me grabbing it but um those are the colors that i'm kind of grabbing to mix together I'm using my straight edge palette knife and um, yeah you just kind of get in there start mixing it on up get it as solid as you can meaning getting rid of that that marbling and the streaking of the colors that you see there the, the more solid you can get it the better especially with these exercises uh, we're meant to use just straight up flat color for the areas that we're painting and um, the book will break down which colors or, or which areas that we're supposed to paint in each exercise so you're not just kind of left guessing <laughs> on where to go and um, here I am I think I'm grabbing a little bit of white yes yeah, and a little bit of white to um, Give it that richness and get it to the color that I was seeing in my viewfinder. Okay, moving on to our yellow wall. And so obviously we're going to start with the yellow paint color, the cadmium yellow light. And um, I'm going to point out here that the reference photo that you're seeing is not exactly the same thing that I was seeing when I actually painted this. I painted at a different time of day, but um, but I didn't want feel like going back and correcting all that. But it's just I just used the older photos to just to show you where we are mixing the colors. So um, so yeah, I had the cadmium yellow light and. Um, just a second ago I mixed in a little bit of cadmium orange to kind of make that yellow a bit warmer the yellow that's straight out of the tube is a bit 
on the cooler side, it's not exactly an accurate yellow, so I was adding in a bit of that orange. Next, we have our red background. So I kind of fucked up a little bit and missed the beginning part of mixing this color. I'm not sure how I didn't capture that, but here we are. We're here at least catching the tail end of it, but basically all I did was pick up the cadmium red light and mixed in a little bit of the alizarin crimson. Luckily, the cadmium red light does not need much adjustment to match that red background, so this was a pretty simple one. All I had to do was make sure that I at least mixed enough of it so that I wouldn't run out when I went to paint it. Now we're going to work on that shadow that the cube is casting on the blue floor. And the color that I was seeing was a bit of a, 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 a purple or a violet color. So we're going to start with the alizarin crimson. One thing to note about alizarin crimson is that it's a transparent pigment. As far as I know, it is this way in all oil paint colors. Maybe it's different for acrylic, but I definitely know for oil paint, it's a transparent color. So that's something to keep in mind when you're mixing this. Um, I also added a bit of the ultramarine blue to kind of cool it down and make it more of a bluish violet kind of color. Mixing that all together. Um, it's very beautiful, but it's a bit too dark. So eventually I'm going to add a bit of white to this to make the color a bit more rich and a bit more opaque so that uh, we're able to see the color that we're actually using. Just gonna um, bring it up a step with that white and I just picked up a little bit more of the ultramarine blue to round it out and try to uh, match the purple color that I was seeing. I think that's pretty close to where I need to be there. Just trying to make sure I mix it really well. Now we're gonna do the part of the cube that's in shadow. Here we are starting out with the cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow light to be exact. Then we're uh, dabbing in a little bit of the phthalo green. So cadmiums and the phthalo colors are very, very strong. And um, they, you're, you're really going to have to be patient here when you're mixing these colors because they will, uh, they're, they're going to fight to overpower each other. So, uh, you can see I, I kind of pulled out a little bit of the excess yellow. I thought that it was going to be a little too bright, so I moved it off to the side before I started mixing the colors together. And so, starting off, we're at a pretty good shade there, but it's going to need to be darker. So I'm adding in the red to neutralize that green, start kind of bringing it down to the darker end of the spectrum and um, trying to make it a lot less bright green and more of a very warm, neutral kind of green. So just kind of adding in little by little the red into the green, taking it down little by little. But it's much easier to do that because you can correct it rather than just slapping in globs and globs of paint and having to um, correct yourself. So this part of the cube is kind of where the project is emphasizing, um, like this is kind of the key of the problem here because that red in the background, if you, if you have your cube set up correctly, that red in the background will reflect off of on that um, darker part of the cube, 
making it really warm. So though our eye registers, it is green. That red is really kind of influencing it a, a little bit. So it's a very, very warm, <laughs> neutralized green. So as you can see, I just threw in a huge, huge pile of red there. Uh, it just kind of wasn't matching what I was seeing. I got a little bit impatient, um, and so that's why that pile was so big. But uh, I advise to not just throw that in like that because that probably would have been much harder to recover from if I had gotten that incorrect. Here we are. Now we're going to do the side that's facing closest to us. And I'm going to pick up, it looks like the phthalo green. Sorry that <laughs> my reference photo is covering me scooping that up a bit. I'm adding that to our excess yellow that I had from the previous green color. Um, pretty good start. What I'm trying to get is uh, a warmer green, but not as bright. That's... That, that's that's a pretty intense green. We want something that's a little more calmer than that. Just add in a little more of that phthalo green there to um, bring it down a little bit to make it less yellow. I'm just trying to mix it all in as best as I can. I had this set up a bit. Um, I wanted to make it easy for you guys to see what I'm doing, but it also required me to do that. It, it required me to mix this at a very odd angle. So sorry if my hand or my arm is in the way, if you can't see anything. Um, I was just trying to do the best I could. And so I just added a little bit of cadmium red light, I believe, to neutralize that green. So that is a lot less saturated than it was. We wanted to make it a little bit on the warm side, but still kind of a, a bright, a bright enough green to differentiate from the green that we're seeing in shadow. So it's not a, a, a very saturated emerald green at all that we're seeing, or at least that I saw. Mixing it on up. So uh, at this point, I think it's when I realized that I was going to need to uh, make a much bigger pile of this green color. I liked the shade, but I knew that it wasn't going to be enough. So I'm trying to add in, basically use the same portions of pigments that I used previously to just make more of this green color. It really stinks. It really, really stinks when you um, have the perfect color and then you run out of it, especially with these exercises. So you want to try to set yourself up for success by mixing enough colors, getting enough, getting enough of a stockpile there. Um, I mean, you might go through way more paint than you would like, but if you just keep in mind that these are exercises and you um, buy the student grade oil paints, the paints that are just a little on the cheaper side, um, you won't be wasting too much money. Now, finally, we're gonna do the top of the green cube, which to me was looking like a, like a really bright yellow green. So again, Starting with the cadmium yellow light, a lot of these colors are yellow based in this exercise. And just try to add just a little dab of that phthalo uh, green. As I mentioned before, cadmiums and phthalos are very strong, strong colors. And so they're going to fight each other when you mix them together. And um, so I had a little bit of that phthalo, but it made it too, too green. I just add a little bit of yellow, trying to warm it up, trying to bring it back 
over to the yellow side um, but it's still too cool and by cool it's it, it has kind of a bluish tint to it we want to make it um, bring it back to where it's on the kind of yellowish side so um, the thing with cat with the cadmium yellow it does skew a bit cool so even though you're adding this green to it they're both cool colors um, you may warm it up just a little bit by adding in some yellow but eventually you're going to need to mix in a little bit um, of a warmer color so as i i just added just a tiny 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 little bit of orange to that to warm it up to break to make it a little more yellow um and and the only reason I knew to do that is just because I've been mixing color forever. <laughs> so here we are. We have our blue floor, our yellow wall, our red wall there, the shadow on the floor, the green that's facing closest to us, our green part that's in shadow, and the top in light. And that is all seven colors for this particular exercise. And yeah, that is it. Thank you for joining me. This concludes the color mix mixing portion for project number three from the book, How to See Color and Paint It. The next video, you will be able to see how I apply these colors to complete the exercise. So come back and watch that if you wanna see how these colors are all put together. And yeah, it's, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or anything at all below. Let's continue this discussion. What did you like about this video? What didn't you like? Are you happy that I finally did a color mixing video overall? Um, if you did see something or hear something that you liked in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you are following along in the book or would like to, I will leave a link in the description box to all to, to access all of the other videos in this playlist. And if you are curious about the book, I will also leave a link to purchase the book if you would like. All right, that is it from me. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great week. Bye.